afternoon everyone. My name is Shantanu Mitro and today I am going to place before you this presentation on Rabindranath Tagore's effort with nation building starting from the ground up that is rural and social reconstruction in India. A story that's not so well known. Next slide. Tagore is uh, well known for what all reasons? Poems, songs. He wrote, in fact, two songs that have been selected as national anthems of two different countries, India and Bangladesh. He is known for novels, essays and paintings. He was the first ever Asian to be awarded a Nobel Prize in 1913 for any subject and he got it for literature. And India's first Prime Minister, Pandit Nehru, described Tagore as India's internationalist par excellence. Next slide. But Tagore's not so well known but equally important work involves his efforts away from the paper and the pencil, away from writing great poetry or composing great music, but rather involved Tagore getting his hands dirty in the soil and working with the poor towards nation building. And this is one aspect of Tagore that is not so well known. Earlier in his life, he was politically active, but disappointed with the result, he came to introspect and came to the conclusion that the real problem for India was not just that the British were ruling it, but rather the structure of the society had great weakness that made it possible for a small group of people from England to rule such a vast land and that true freedom will not arrive with the departure of the British but rather would require the repair of the social and economic foundation of the Indian heartland. He had no illusion that this was going to be a humongous task would require enormous amount of effort and sacrifice and he got involved to do just that in the villages surrounding Shantiniketan. And that effort is the subject of my presentation today. The top picture shows Tagore in his 30s in his family estate in today's Bangladesh. It was there that he first realized the abject poverty of uh, India and the, uh, and the social fabric, how weak it was. And it was here that he first started experimenting with rural reconstruction. And later, when he was no more required to be involved in these estates, uh, he moved his work to Shantiniketan on a grander scale. The picture at the bottom is of a, a very important person, Leonard Elmhurst, who was an Englishman studying agroeconomic system in uh, USA that uh, Tagore met up with. And he so influenced Le uh, Elmhurst that, that Elmhurst, as his first job, spent the first few years uh, of his working life with Tagore in a rural reconstruction project, uh, kick-starting it in Sriniketan uh, near Shantiniketan in India without any salary. In fact, he and his wife ended up uh, supporting financially Tagore's effort at rural reconstruction for decades to come. In fact, the two most important names that came to assist Tagore in his rural reconstruction work around Shantiniketan, Sriniketan, were Leonard Elmhurst and Kalimon Ghosh. I will come to Ghosh later. Next, so what are the areas where uh, the India needed help uh, in nation building? The most important weaknesses of India was twofold. Number one was the division between people, the country was not united, and the second was abject poverty, backwardness, and absence of education in the rural heartland. So regarding the first defect, India was a land where lots of people lived side by side but did not share their lives and were divided based on religion and caste and ethnicity and language and whatnot. And the second big drawback was the extreme poverty, lack of education and modernism in the rural lifestyle and the the extent to which the urban society exploited it. And it is in this area where uh, this presentation concentrates. Example, farming, which had to be modernized and the yield had to be 
uh, increased promotion of cooperative systems study in social sciences involving rural India environmental protection Tagore was, was one of the earliest champions of this concept uh, improvement of rural health and hygiene there was almost no uh, system of support here uh, Bratibalak or the Boy Scout system which was started in the villages uh, promotion of handicrafts uh, small scale manufacture of tools and machinery promotion of village fairs so that village products could have a better outlet to the paying customers in the in the urban uh, localities uh, reverse the economic exploitation of village India which was happening at that time and which in fact is still happening today and turn the villages into progressive building blocks of the nation next slide okay so picking up these items one at a time agriculture what did Tagore's effort here involve well he sent his son and his son-in-law to the University of Illinois to study agriculture and then sending his son again to Japan to find out how they were managing to uh, harvest two crops of rice every year while the rest of the world could manage only one then he sent Kalimon Ghosh to a whole lot of countries in Europe from Scandinavia all the way to the Middle East to study the link between education and agroeconomics of the rural heartland how new knowledge was being created to directly help the rural economic system and Tagore sent Kalimon Ghosh to all these countries including uh, the, what is today Israel and was at that time known as uh, Palestine to see how people were managing to raise crop in desert land with very little access to water then there was this need for seed banks and microcredit run by the cooperative method by the villagers and for the villagers picture in the middle shows a land being tried out with various kind of harvest and the picture at the bottom hazy as it is is one of the first dharmagola or uh, you can say a, a granary a seed bank uh, having been created to a uh, lend uh, for instance seeds to some farmers who fall into hard times sometimes and also to borrow or, or to, uh, to, to, to deposit grains excess grains that you may have in some years instead of selling it uh, cheap just because harvest is plentiful you could store it there and, and sell it later when the prices improve idea being the profits of this enterprise should go directly to the farmer rather than to speculative uh, middlemen and holders the photograph right at top is a 70 year old Tagore pushing the plow standing behind the bulls in one of those uh, festivals follow caution festival to popularize modern farming and also to break down the human barrier Bengal middle class is to consider people involved with farming to be sort of beneath them and not not necessarily in the same social strata and therefore there is to look down on them and so on so he also tried to break down that human barrier by uh, designing this beautiful social functions and raising awareness and raising camaraderie and so on next dairy farming he created one of the first uh, cooperative run dairy farms in India over 160 hybrid cows uh, the cooperative society actually supplied good quality milk at reasonable prices to the villages as well as to the university to the staff and the students and all economically self-sustaining next social science uh, what can I say so many great people had congregated around Tagore uh, which had nothing to do with uh, writing poetry or, or uh, discussing philosophy uh, the person on top is W.W. Uh, w. Pearson on the right standing behind uh, Tagore sitting on the chair uh, noted uh, social scientist and Tagore had you know mentioned that around Shantiniket and among the various people the poorest of the poor the, the lowest rung of the of the ladder was occupied by this Adivasi people the Santal community who were worse than just poor they literally did not eat uh, a, a square meal a day in, in, in the bad seasons and yet they were among the happiest 
and most contented out of various kind of ethnic groups that uh, lived around. There was something that we, had, we could learn from this uh, Adivasi community. How are they so happy with so little? And also how to help them without destroying their independence and their, their value systems and so on. And uh, he invited W.W. W. Pearson to come and spend time in those uh, Aboriginal or uh, tribal villages. And that's what Pearson did. He spent a few years with the Santals around Shantiniketan. As a result of uh, that study, several initiatives were taken up, including what has been mentioned in the previous slides with regard to microcredit and uh, seed bank arrangements and so on. The other person uh, in the colored picture, one of the rare few colored pictures available of Tagore, which was black and white photograph hand painted those days, uh, that's uh, PC Mohanobish with his uh, wife and uh, Tagore there. It's a larger than life character. Later on, he founded, he founded the Indian Statistical Institute. He was a scientist, he was a statistician and all that. But on encouragement of Tagore, he actually spent time around Shantiniketan with a lot of assistants collecting huge material and data over a long period of time on rice cultivation. The idea was all this data, the yield, the method of irrigation, the method of cultivation, the method, method of distribution, storage, wastage, pricing, earning, all these would form the basis for a future India to develop its agricultural policy. Next, environmental protection and reforestation. Man's need to live in harmony with nature and not in conflict. Nature needed to be enjoyed and sustained and not conquered. Tagore was uh, one of the early champions of environmentalism and probably one of the best ever nature poets the world has ever seen. And the fantastic range of poems and songs and events and social functions that he created uh, to teach man to live in harmony with nature, to, to bring back the greens, and that man's spiritual root was anchored in nature. Tagore's involvement with all this is, is quite phenomenal. He even rejected the Western idea of, uh, of children having to be herded into concrete blocks uh, for the purpose of uh, education. He promoted the open air school system and let the child grow up in a natural environment and made nature study to be one of the important uh, subjects in the curriculum. And for grown-ups, he engaged with soil conservation study and effort, tree planting and reforestation ceremony and efforts. Shantiniketan was a desert-like place when he first came there. And in the next 50 years, the land has turned a lot greener. The satellite picture of the place today looks completely different. Even a man-made forest has come up and some deers have been introduced there as a deer park and so on. So Tagore's <coughs> efforts and involvement with uh, nature conservation and environmentalism was uh, very deep. We only cover this subject very briefly in this uh, slide. Next, rural healthcare and hygiene, where Tagore involved himself in all kinds of uh, work uh, towards this uh, subject, uh, such as uh, uh, drainage system from the villages, uh, preventing breeding of mosquitoes and insects and eradication of disease such as leprosy or mal malaria or tuberculosis, typhoid, uh, purification of drinking water, also cooperative run healthcare system in the villages and then creation of women's self-help group to be taught in midwifery so that expectant mothers in the rural villages would have healthy childbirth in absence of any hospital or any other kind of maternity ward system those days. Next, the Brutibalaks or the Boy Scouts on the picture at left where they are engaged with uh, physical exercise. This gives them uh, good health, uh, strength of character, uh, some knowledge about working as a team. And the picture at the right top, they are uh, engaged in, in studies. And in the picture at right bottom, they are going door to door for data gathering. 
They would also be involved with lots of uh, volunteer work such as road building or pond digging or maintenance of ponds and water uh, system, drainage, waste management, uh, hygiene and so on during village fairs, etc. Next, handicrafts. And here in Srinigatan, there was efforts done at improvement in carpentry, a vocational uh, training given to people to make better uh, goods out of wood or uh, leather goods, uh, pottery making, sericulture farm and silk production, paper making, book binding, manuscript preservation, uh, hand loom and, uh, and textile manufacture, fabric design, batik, weaving, embroidery, as well as vocational training for women to be self-employed sitting in their home or, or within their environment in the village atmosphere. Next, promotion of village fairs was a very big thing in his overall scheme because these fairs were to be designed such so that produce from the village can find an outlet for proper sale to the affluent urban community and also to raise appreciation in the minds of the urban man for rural folk culture as well as handicraft from the artisans of rural India and thereby repair the social, cultural and economic relation between the city and the village. The picture at top shows Tagore sitting with uh, rural reconstruction workers and some trainers that came from uh, other provinces. And the picture below shows the core team in Srinikatan Rural Reconstruction Project uh, with a person in the middle with a bushy moustache is Kalimhon Ghosh, my grandfather. Next, and that brings me nearly to the end of the pre presentation and with a sorry realization of the situation on the ground today and uh, a note that situations have not changed much since then. The class status consciousness and apathy of the middle class uh, and Tagore's frustration with it is still valid. Uh, the decline in rural reconstruction efforts after Tagore's demise and that effort is a task that remains un unfinished. The continent is no more united, it's more fragmented. Poverty has not been eradicated and farmers are still committing suicide. Climate change has only made things worse. The urban-rural divide is as grotesque as it was before. There is a need to rethink global economic model as well as our environmental policy. And that Tagore's effort initiated a hundred years ago is, is just as valid today as it was in his time. And that brings me to the end of my presentation. I have to thank many people, including uh, Vishwarthi University and Robindra Bhavan, uh, Udayanand uh, Singh and his colleagues that helped me with some of the pictures here. The one on the left top is, uh, is a picture of a group of people in Shantinigatan in the 1910s. And uh, Tagore is on the topmost row uh, in the middle. And uh, Kalimohan Ghosh is on the extreme left. And the other picture on the right is Tagore and my mother, all of 15 years old, when she passed out from school and went and told him that I have passed out from school. And he said, oh, you've become a bigger pandit than me because I never passed out of school. And that ends my presentation. The next song uh, that will come from our team is uh, uh, one of the songs that Tagore had composed for his uh, replantation, reforestation and tree plantation ceremony. It's called I Amader Angone. Basically, is an invitation saying, come, come to my courtyard. And that, that's an invitation extended to saplings. Asking trees to come and, you know, be part of our lives and inviting trees to, to, to be reborn and, and to grow and stay healthy and so on. So with that song, uh, I, will, I end my presentation and uh, thank you so much.